Now we will see the topic runout tolerances. This is the third one in the for PL. So first one form tolerance we have completed. Orientation is completed. Now we are coming to the runout tolerances. Under runout tolerance we have two types of tolerance. One is circular runout. Second one is total runout. So what is a runout tolerance? First of all, runout is defined as the deviation of a part surface from the desired form and orientation when it is rotated 360 degree around the datum axis. So it is mainly applicable for the cylindrical features, mainly for the cylindrical components or the rotating components it is mainly applied. So circular runout and total runout, two categories are there. The symbol used for circular runout is like an arrow mark, inclined, a slanting arrow mark and for total runout two arrow marks connected by a horizontal line. So this is called as total runout symbol. So difference between total runout and circular runout. Just to see the drawing we will get some idea. For circular runout it is like a circularity to easily differentiate. In circularity we were measuring the circular features cross section the roundness of the cross section we were measuring. Similar to that in circular runout, we will be checking the runout of the feature at any given cross section. So at only one particular point we will be measuring. So this is called a circular runout. Whereas in total runout it is like cylindricity. Similar to cylindricity where we were measuring the roundness throughout the surface of the feature. In total runout we will check the runout throughout the surface of the feature. So from the beginning till the end we will be checking the runout. So this is called as the total runout and it is indicated by double arrow. Then what is the difference between circularity and circular runout? The main thing is in circularity we don't have a datum reference. But in circular runout and in total runout we will have a datum reference. So main important thing is we need to have a datum compulsory we need to have a datum so with respect to a datum feature your component or your measurable feature will be rotated in this case if we are measuring the runout of the smaller diameter then with respect to what we are measuring the runout of the circular feature so that is what the question will come so in this case datum a maybe the bigger diameter will be the datum a so with respect to datum a when you are holding datum a and you are rotating the component so we are checking the runout with respect to the datum a that is a bigger diameter with respect to that of the smaller diameter so that is called as the circular runout similarly the for total runout also we need a datum reference so with respect to what we are going to measure it All cylindrical features being controlled must be on the same axis as the datum. So that is what runout tolerance means. Whatever the surface, whatever the feature you are going to check, it should be in the same axis. For example, in this drawing, you can see here surface constructed around datum axis. So the horizontal center line is going to be the datum. With respect to this datum axis, all these features, all the surfaces should be rotating. In a uh, within a given runout tolerance. Similarly, it can be for perpendicular to datum also. Control surface may be cylindrical, tapered, or perpendicular to the datum axis also. With respect to the datum axis, a perpendicular face can also be measured. That is also can be measured for runout tolerances. So runout is generally not recommended for features where matability is very very critical. So one more important point to consider is we can't apply the modifiers so the maximum material condition least material condition is not at all applied to runout tolerances so by default it will be applied for rfs only that is regardless of feature size a datum is always required as i mentioned in the previous slide compulsory you need a datum here so now we will see what is circular runout in this diagram you can see the future control frame is being applied. A runout symbol is there and a value is there and a datum reference is also given. So without datum reference we can't uh, use circular runout and main point is the geometric control shape is always a wide tolerance. So you will not see a diameter symbol in the second column at all. Second uh, zone you will not see a diameter symbol. So we will come into detail of this particular drawing. So they have located a two points like in one dimension is for the diameter of the bigger 
uh, flange, you can say bigger flange, dia 36 plus or minus 0 0.015 pi should have a run out, circular run out tolerance within a wide tolerance zone of 0 0.020 with respect to the datum feature A. In this case, the datum feature A is the hole which is given in this uh, particular area, 8.01 plus or minus 0 0.02. Similarly, one more position they have given that is on the face, the back side face of the flange should be having a circular run out tolerance within a wide tolerance zone range of 0 0.010 with respect to the datum feature A. So here with respect to datum, when it, the, this path is rotated with respect to this datum, for example, this hole may be inserted by, inserted by using a spindle and with respect to that spindle, when the component is being rotated and when we use a dial gauge, the OD should be running within the tolerance of 0 0.02. Similarly, this face, the cross section, the main thing is the cross section, each circular element of the future surface must be within the white tolerance of 0 0.02. So, this face, one circular element of this face, next circular element and third circular element. Similarly, here also in OD, first circular element, second circular element, third circular element. Like that, in each and every cross section, circular element should be within a circular run out of 0 0.010. Now we will see the total run out. So total run out is an extended version of the circular run out we can consider. In this diagram you can see it is applying for the entire future surface. The future diameter 30 millimeter ODE is being controlled with respect to the datum surface A. So this datum hole A with respect to this datum hole A, the total run out should be within a wide tolerance zone of 0 0.020 throughout the entire surface. So when it is applied throughout the entire surface, like cylindricity, then it is called as the total run out. So when you are rotating this part with respect to this datum feature A, the entire surface should be within a wide tolerance zone range of 0 0.020. So this is called as total run out. So now we will come to see how we are going to check the run out tolerances, both either the circular run out as well as the total run out. So it can be generally checked by using a dial indicator. So I will just show you a few videos so that you will get some idea of how it is being checked. So in this case they are using a dial indicator, so they need to check the run out of this particular component. They have given here, so this component is kept on a block so that it can be rotated manually. So what they are trying to say is they are using the dial gauge and they are just finding the peak point and making sure that it's uh, applying some pressure and made zero and they are trying to rotate the component. When it is rotating, so we are able to see the deflection. So in this case, the small part is going to be the datum axis and they are finding the run out of the bigger OD. So you can see he is trying to say that when this is rotated, they are checking the run out. So when the small part is rotated, we are able to get the run out of the bigger diameter here. So based on the deflection, we can take a decision whether this part is accepted or not accepted within the tolerance zone or not. In this video, you can see the total run out, how they are going to check the total run out. So this is a bigger shaft they are going to use. It is being rotated between the centers. So it is supported between the centers and they are trying to check the run out. Here he is using a dial gauge at one particular point and he is trying to find the peak point and he will apply the pressure and make the dial gauge zero and he is rotating now. So that it will give the variation in this particular place and the same dial gauge will be moved to different locations throughout this entire surface length, throughout the entire length of the surface he will be moving to get the total run out. See he is trying to move along the surface throughout the entire length and he will be noting down the values. So he will stop at one position and he will again check it out. He will rotate the component and you need to check it out. So it's rotating the component again and checking the run out. So the total run out from this surface end to the other end, it should be the same. The total value should be lying within the given tolerance as per the drawing.
is now checking at one more point. So it's moving the dial gauge across the complete length of the surface. So this is called as the total run node. So if it is checked at one particular cross section, it is circular run node. When it is checked throughout the entire length of the surface, this is for the total run node inspection. So run node tolerance is mainly applied for rotating parts. For example, mainly in the bearings and in the shafts. So these kind of run node will be used. And in our machine tools, spindle run node, that is a very, very important thing for a milling machine or lathe as well. The spindle run nodes will be regularly checked. To get the accuracy, uh, you need to check the drill run node also. Out of the drill bit is more, then you will get a bigger hole diameter. So the hole diameter will be varying. That is one of the reason. Like if your spindle uh, run node is not proper and uh, your tool is also having some run node, then it's a problem. So we need to check the run out. So it should be within the given tolerance limit. Mainly it is applied for the rotating parts with respect to one axis to another. So how we are going to represent the run out in a drawing? So in the future control frame, all the three will be utilized here, the three zones. The first zone, the geometric characteristic zone, we have the symbol, one arrow mark for circular run out and two arrow marks joined by a horizontal line is for the total run out and you have the tolerance zone size but no shape is there as well as you can't apply no tolerance modifier that is maximum material condition or least material condition will not be applied definitely there is no room for applying the uh, modifiers here and zone shape is also not there since it is a wide tolerance zone and datum reference is compulsory and again for datum reference also we can't apply the tolerance modifier the MMC and LMC condition is not applicable. But datum reference is compulsorily required. So to easily remember these two runouts, we can relate it to the circularity and cylindricity. So circularity without any reference we are measuring. But circular runout we are using a datum reference. So that is the difference. Similarly cylindricity and total runout. Without any reference we measure the cylindricity. When you give some reference with respect to one datum we are measuring the runout, then it is going to be the total runout.